Hello, Earthlings and Aliens. It's me, Altea, your art buddy, and I'm here to talk to you about three different techniques that I like to use when I'm inking my drawings. Ink was my first love as far as art mediums go. I remember walking into a blockbuster video at around nine years old and picking up a Shonen Jump magazine and saying to myself, well, guess I'm gonna be a manga artist. And so I started taking my art seriously. And I begged my parents to take me to the art supply store and buy me some of those super fancy Micron pens. And long story short, I've been inking my drawings ever since. But over the years, my art style has changed so many times and my inking style has had to adapt. And because of this, I have a couple of very different inking techniques that I have experience with. And I think that each of these different inking techniques is appropriate in a different context. And hopefully by sharing them with you, I can help you figure out what inking technique is going to best suit your style. So for each of these techniques, I'm going to go over a couple of pointers, the different art supplies that I use, and some things to keep in mind as far as deciding which of these techniques is going to be useful for your projects. Let's get started. The first style that I'm going to talk about is this scratchy hatching kind of style. You can use any fine tip pen for this, such as a nib pen or a 0.05 felt tip pen. But my personal favorite is the Pilot High Tech C, which is actually a ballpoint pen. I like to use a ballpoint pen because I find that it gives me a consistent line width and it doesn't tear up the paper like a nib pen could, and it lasts a bit longer than a felt tip pen. The main issue that comes up when you're using this kind of pen is that it might not be waterproof or color fast. So if you want to color your inks traditionally with like watercolor or markers, it's probably going to bleed. There's a couple of things to keep in mind when you're inking in this style. First is since the pen tip is so small, you're probably not going to be able to get smooth perfect lines because a skinnier pen is going to pick up more of that wobbly wobbly thing that your hand does when you're trying to do a long stroke or something. Because I drink a lot of caffeine and have pretty trembly hands, I find that I have to work around this wobbly line rather than being able to get rid of it entirely. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because it also fits in with this inking style pretty well and the hatching is going to cover up a lot of the mistakes that you might be making. One of the things to watch out for with this inking style is clarity. Since there's so many tiny lines and the hatching is going to swallow up your outline, you might accidentally create an image that isn't legible. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're using it to create, say, a very messy looking environment or are trying to obfuscate some of those details, but I find that it's really useful to go over the outline a couple of times or use a thicker pen for the outline so that you can have a bit more clarity with this image. For the shading, I prefer a hatching style rather than cross hatching. The difference is when that you're cross hatching, your lines are going to intersect more perpendicularly than if you were doing hatching, which is when you have all of these lines going in the same direction. And when they intersect, it's at a less extreme angle than cross hatching might be. Cross hatching is a good way to make your images have this classic etching kind of look to them. So if that's what you're going for, it might actually fit your style better to do cross hatching. But I find that doing cross hatching kind of creates this captured in time kind of static look to your images. And, and because of that, I prefer hatching because it can actually help the movement of the piece since you can follow the contours and the lines of action when you're doing your hatching and that's going to help guide your eye along the image. You can make different areas darker by shortening your hatching lines or crossing over them multiple times with lines going in the same direction. And here's my finished piece. I think that hatching in particular shines when you're going to leave the inking alone without coloring it in because if you do any kind of shading on top of the hatching, it might actually hide all of this work that you've done with your hatching. So if you are going to color it, I would recommend that you do it in a flat color. It's also going to make coloring digitally a bit more difficult because these shapes might not be closed and all of these little lines are going to make the select tool and the bucket tool pretty much useless. 
The next technique that I want to go over with you is inking with a brush pen. For this, I love to use the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. The brush is made with fibers instead of a felt tip in the shape of a brush. This gives you a lot of control over the width of your lines and also means that it's refillable and more durable. It's a little bit pricey, but super worth it. I've had the same brush pen since college and I only bought another one so I could get it in the gray color. If you're a heckin' genius, you can also use a regular watercolor brush in India ink, but I'm not comfortable enough to try to teach you how to do that. The brush pen has a pretty high learning curve since you have to be more careful about the amount of pressure you're putting on it. With some practice, you'll be able to make both both fine lines and black spotting with the same pen. It's a great tool if you're on the go since you only need one pen to do everything. It also creates these beautiful expressive lines that can either stand alone or get colored in. Did I mention that it's really gorgeous if you do it well? I think it's really gorgeous if you do it well. You might notice for the brush pen I've tilted my paper and I'm drawing with my arm more, pivoting on the elbow or the shoulder rather than the wrist. That's because it's easier to make smooth, sweeping motions if you use your whole arm instead of just your wrists. This is very important for getting those smooth lines. I tend to ink out from my body, letting my arm guide me along. It can be tricky to get in fine details since you don't really have a teensy point to draw with, but it's very doable. My style is more simplified anyway, so it works pretty well in this case. Like with hatching, clarity is key for the brush pen. For this reason, I like to leave this halo of white between the edge of a shape and the shaded part in order to differentiate those shapes from each other. Here's the finished piece. Brush pen is best for creating bold shapes and lines, but it can be used to make pretty much anything look good. It's versatile, but it takes a lot of practice to get used to it. When you're getting started, I'd recommend working big and then tightening it up as you learn how to be more precise. The last inking style that I'm going to talk about is a clean inking style. For this, I just use Micron pens in a variety of widths. Tried and true, they're the first art pens I ever tried. They're not perfect, I don't find them to be particularly durable, but I've tried a bunch of competitors and haven't found anything significantly better enough to bother getting them exclusively. Doing clean line art like this is extremely versatile. I'm doing a pretty simple drawing now, but you can imagine how a clean line style would be good for comics, where you have to do backgrounds and objects and the like. I use a clean line art style with some pretty hefty black spotting whenever I'm making my comics. It's easy to color and easy to read, and that plus being relatively quick to do is a huge plus for me. This also has a bit of a learning curve depending on how clean and precise you want your lines to be. The way that I manage is by taking it slow when I'm doing my inks, and taking time to pause between lines, reposition the paper, and stretch. Just like with the brush pen, I'm using my whole arm to make these clean lines. You're able to be pretty granular about line widths and can even switch to a thicker pen or you can just go over your lines again to make bolder lines. Here's the finished piece. This is usually how I ink my drawings. I feel like it fits my art style better than anything else right now, especially since I'm working in a tandem, digital, traditional kind of way. These are my main three inking techniques. I think that all of them have places where they shine, and honestly, they work really well together, so it's not like you have to pick one and never touch the others. The most important thing is to pick something that works for what you're trying to make, and whatever you find fun. There's also a bunch of other inking techniques that I didn't go over, mostly because I'm not comfortable enough with them to try to teach you how to do them. Have you tried any of these inking styles? Interested in a more in-depth look at any of them? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in more tutorials like this, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything specific you'd like me to talk about, or if you're interested in seeing the high-res images of this art I've made here, consider supporting me on Patreon. For just one dollar, you can vote in polls and make suggestions about what you'd like to see. Alright, thank you. Illy! Bye!